Any device that manipulates light for a specific purpose is an optical system. When a person is having his or her picture taken, one optical system, the eye, is looking through another optical system, the camera. The camera, with its system of movable lenses, mirrors, and prisms, controls light to produce a focused image on a light-sensitive surface, the film. The eye behaves in a similar way. It has a system of flexible lenses, muscles, and assorted tissues, controlling light to produce a focused image on the light-sensitive surface at the back of the eye, called the retina. Let's look first at how nature does it. The convex lens in the eye is flexible. This enables muscles to change its shape, making it thicker or thinner. The shape affects the amount of bending of the light passing through it. The thicker lens enables us to see objects close up. The thinner lens is used for distance viewing. The lens of a camera must do the same thing to focus an image on film. When you focus, you're making sure that the relationship between the object, the lens, and the film will produce a clear image. For a good eye, the distance between the lens and the retina is equal to the focal length, so the focal point is on the retina, the eye's imaging screen. Usually a very clear image is formed, but in some cases the image is not clear, so the eye needs help with an extra set of lenses. Many people who wear glasses are usually either nearsighted or farsighted. Generally, that means that the person's eyeball is the wrong shape for the optical system to work properly. Nearsighted persons can have eyeballs that are too long, so the image is formed in front of the retina instead of on it. The person can then only see objects clearly that are near. We call this person nearsighted. Farsightedness is the opposite case. The eyeball can be too short, and the image is formed behind the retina. This person can only see clearly objects that are far away. Farsightedness. Both conditions can be corrected with an extra set of lenses. Doug Nakayatani figures out what type of lens is best. This instrument is called a phoropter and it has a series of lenses in it which will have every, everyone's given prescription in it. What we would like to do is to use the various lenses in here, whether they be divergent lenses to correct for nearsightedness or converging lenses which correct for farsightedness. To show this, let's look at a diagram. In this first diagram, we'll represent uh, nearsightedness or myopia. In the first example here, what happens is when the light rays enter the eye, Instead of focusing on this back wall, the retina, they focus before the retina and therefore give a blurred image. What we want to do is use a minus or diverging lens to decrease the power of the optical system to allow the light rays to focus on the retina so that this individual eye can see clearly. Here we have an example of a pair of glasses which contain divergent lenses. As you can see, the edge of the lens is very thick, and the thin center of the lens is very thin. Our second example here, we're showing farsightedness or hyperopia. In this case, the optical system here is too weak, and the light rays, if allowed to, would focus behind the eye. What we need to do to correct this problem is to get a converging lens, which we call a plus lens, which will increase the power of this focusing system such that the light rays will focus on the retina and this, in, this individual eye will see clearly as well. This pair of glasses here is a converging lens. It tends to magnify things, as you can see. It's very thick in the center and the edges are very thin. How's that? Optical systems that use lenses are important for their ability to gather and focus light, to make very small objects visible, or make distant objects appear closer and more visible. Optical systems can also project an existing image onto a distant screen. Since a beam of light travels in a straight line, it's a useful tool for sensing the presence of an object. 
A beam of light shines on a photocell. The photocell sends a signal to the opening mechanism of the door when the light is cut off. More precise laser beams can use the same method to measure the position of body parts to extremely fine tolerances. Technicians who work with optical systems need to know the effect that the separate optical components in the system will have on the light. Here's an example of an optical system that was used to measure the distance between the Earth and the Moon. It used almost every aspect of optics we've seen in this unit. Two telescopes were used to send a beam of light skyward and capture it again. The light source was an argon laser. The coherent light waves of the laser beam stayed pretty close together across the space between the Earth and the Moon. On the surface of the moon, the laser light hit a retro reflector left there by the Apollo astronauts. Prisms within the reflector bent the laser beam back on itself, so it turned around and headed straight back to Earth. The telescope on Earth used its large mirror and lens system to capture part of the return beam and focus it onto a photo detector. Once the light connection was made between Earth and moon, technicians sent pulses along the beam path. They accurately measured the time it took a pulse to make the trip to the moon and back. Then they used the speed of light, which they knew, the time, and a formula you've already learned. Distance is speed times time. In this way, they measured the distance to the moon to within a few centimeters. Repeating this experiment several times has shown us that the moon wobbles on its axis and is actually getting farther away. It's an example of how technicians needed to know the characteristics of light, in this case laser light, and how to use optical systems to shape and guide that light so it could be used as a precision tool.